Welcome. This is the February 27th Jalen Zones production user call. We have Mohammed, Rod, Jan, and myself. And last week we talked about the idea from long, long ago about putting a jail ID in a PID to help distinguish who, what belongs to whom, et cetera. So at the end of that conversation, we found the jail max definition. And then I reached out to Paul Henningkamp and he said, hey, that came later after the original jail design in 2000 when they needed to support all the GI, uh, the JLS tools and such in user space. So that said, uh, I think this is a typo on JLS. Uh, what does that teach us? Well, I, I have a comment about the, the conclusion drawn about jail max and, and other stuff. The jail max, from my read of the code, I actually believe that was there from day one. Hmm. Okay. And it's predominantly to restrict the size of a tail queue that has to get searched on jail creation, jail deletion, and some other things. And in fact, on, on a in a scenario, I believe there is a place where you will walk that queue twice searching for an empty slot. Um, so th it has nothing to do with visibility. It's purely a, a optimization to keep the size of a tail queue from growing unbounded. Basically, the only thing that JLMAX does is restrict the size of a tail queue to a million elements. And tail queues are literally search, so they're they're not. You don't want to be doing huge tail queues. But uh, so it, it could be completely possible to to increase or eliminate that million number by changing the data structures that struck jail is stored in. Right now, it's stored in the tail queue. Yeah, I get why it has to be an intrusively linked uh, data structure. So we can't have white fan out trees and those uncommon in the kernel outside of maybe the forwarding information basis. Uh, but we do have the BSD uh, red black tree uh, macros. Yeah. So it would be simple to just drop those in and given that this isn't a hot code path, but just something which shouldn't be too slow and that I'm, compared to this, everything else that goes with the jail, just having a inner red black tree node embedded in each thread jail instead of a single pointer is really not too painful. I think it's like three words instead of one or so. Uh, Did you say red black as in colors? Yes. Okay, yep. Thank you. Uh, man, free tree is a, a man page for this uh, insane header, but it's well tested code. It's not pretty to write, but it's easy to use. It works very well, but it's just. But here, here luckily the... the what? Uh, the, yeah, the but the the. Core topic here is putting a, a jail ID in the PID, and the, the PID is also a 32 bit type. So even though jail is bounded to a million, uh, I guess you, I mean, PIDs used to be a 16 bit integer. I guess you could probably. Uh, mm -hmm. So one uh, thing is this 1 million limit is only applied to the auto jail ID allocation code. And if no. I understood the code correctly, no, no you can have larger uh, jail IDs. I'm running it like that. Uh, no, it I works. do not believe so. I do not believe you can create a jail ID higher than 1 million. You can, because uh, this limit is only ever checked against when you uh, ask the kernel to pick the jail oh, ID. Yeah. But if you it, specify it, uh, it works. Yeah, you can have you can have you're right. You can have a jail ID above a million. You cannot have more than a million jails. This restricts the size of the tail queue to a million. That's all it's for. It doesn't it, it doesn't care what the 32-bit integer is. And 
if I understand the code correctly, the walking it twice is after the jail IDs have wrapped, then picking the basically so that it finds out that it can't pick the next highest uh, jail ID, then it uh, scans again for the first three available or something like that. Yeah, that's the double. That's the second walk of the of the of the tail queue. And I think we have in the kernel already a clever data structure for uh, device unit uh, driver uh, unit number allocations, which basically is just, and the same code or similar code has to exist for picking the lowest available file descriptor in an efficient manner so that you can find the lowest free uh, ID. Yeah. I, but I don't think this idea of putting a jail ID in the pit is just going to be a, a viable thing. There's just not without extending the size of a pit. Yeah, you would have to turn pit into a sixty-four bit, and that but, would be a, a ABI breakage. Oh um, yeah, especially on thirty-two bit architectures. I know they're going out, but on sixty-four bit, it probably wouldn't even change the way the integers map to registers during or during uh, system call if the arguments are passed through registers. But if uh, on architectures where the system call arguments go always to the stack, it could change the stack layout uh, for system calls so that it wouldn't be easy to provide a binary yeah, it would, way. Yeah, it would change the stack layout, certainly on a pure stack machine. Yeah, but, but we don't support um, any of those. So what would be nice would be that basically you normally, from inside a jail, you would see the lower parts of basically your jail IDs as whatever. And then yeah, kind of like zero in the upper half means my prison uh, Anything else is explicit, and on the host, uh, it's so on the true host, it's just the scene or something like that. Could be a neat way to solve this. Well, yeah, you could do that. You could you could could restrict both the pit and jail ranges to be half of thirty two bits. What I would really now that wouldn't work with sub jails because you can't. Uh, recursively split a single bit. So, yeah. But doesn't a sub jail just get a new jail ID? Yes. Which, but it doesn't get a new uh, n minus one's top of pit bit. As in, it's descendant of a jail ID, obviously, so it needs some kind of handling that is not just another one. Yes, the thing is, you don't have just in a jail, but not in a jail, but you have, you have potentially multiple levels of jails nested. So you can't just toggle a single bit to say not jailed or jailed. Um, if you, unless you want completely different behavior between the host and any jail. And that would make it hard to write code so that it, a jail can manage its sub jails in a clean way. Hmm. But the nice thing about putting the jail ID in the upper half of the PID would be that then PID namespacing uh, per jail would implicitly fall out of that by either uh, making the upper half significant or not. So basically, you could use the pit without the upper half to use it inside a jail. And unless you have a race condition around jail ID reuse, uh, you can be sure that if you use the full pit out of jail ID and per jail pit process ID, that it would never uh, suffer from any cross jail race conditions. So whatever happens, you couldn't target anything but a process from the same jail ID. That would solve some of the problems I've 
read in bug reports about confused deputies with Linux style PID uh, renumbering because they don't just partition the PID namespace, but they instead uh, arbitrarily uh, remap them so that it can be that a Linux process namespace writes a PID file and then someone from a different namespace uh, reads the PID file. There's no good way to find out which process is meant. Hmm. And Would you need a uh, parent JID? No, you wouldn't because the JID namespace is flat. Okay. Um, at least that I don't see why you would. You need me to do it that way. No, not just no place, but no need because of that. I, I'm using that broadly, but. Ah. Yeah, at least I. It would be really nice to see that, but it would be very invasive. So I can understand why we will not get that anytime soon because it's probably not worth the effort. Um, instead, I think for just supporting system D in Linux branded uh, jails. A simple, by comparison, hack would be to just allow a jail to specify which process is supposed to stand in for uh, PID1 and by default make it the first process to attach to a jail. So the first time a process is attached to a jail, it, if this flag is configured, it would get basically any signal sent to PID1 from inside this jail goes to this other process. And then if systemctl, uh, the Linux binary, sends a signal to PID1, it just ends up at the right process. Because from what I've seen in the bug report, that's the only use case where this is required right now to support the next jails. At least I haven't seen any other, but there may be other use cases. What moment have you run across any other uh, examples? No, I don't think I'm the right one to 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 ask or answer this question. No, so I don't know. Or Rodney, for what it's worth, I guess Antonik was going to join, but it's a little busy. I don't know. I just I just don't have any environments for jails thank you that's why I'm, that's cool like that's cool so then jan do you think that bjorn zeeb's review addresses that use case or is it just a different approach that doesn't even help in the one use case we know about if i remember correctly his one is basically to implement the in my opinion problematic uh, linux behavior completely i see um at least that's the one i've seen but i don't know if that one was abandoned and replaced <laughs> cool Jan you have some UCL news it sounds like you threw out your prototype and are developing something new yes tell us about the new give, one. Me, a, give me a second cool so um, basically one of the problems with uh, using of the, the main problem I found with using um, uh, just need a second. Um, you gonna share? Install this. Why? In a few seconds. Sure, sure. So um, one of the problems with uh, using libucl instead of lib, uh, basically the existing jail.conf parser and similar use cases is that you can't have the kind of self-references the jail.conf format supports uh, in libucl. And you can't by default um, assign to the configuration parser's variables from 
within the configuration, you can define uh, objects, arrays, and uh, scalar values, however you want, but you can't basically set a variable. And while the configuration isn't part of a variable, how jlotconf does it that basically the configuration is the variables and the other way around. So um, that means that because of the lazy lookup logic implemented in jlotconf, it behaves differently than basically the normal other parsers do. Uh, but it also gives us flexibilities like uh, defining the root directory of a jail by referencing the jail name and then creating a jail. And inside the jail, the path just evaluates correctly um, because it's done really per jail later on. But that's specific to how this one parser works and it has other limitations, which means that it would be nice to be able to use both, but for there to be a good way to convert your existing configuration uh, in an almost mechanical way, you have to kind of preserve this capability uh, to reference the jail name and stuff in other variables. So um, what I looked into is how to um, represent this within libucl and I found that in my opinion the best way to do it is to just register new macros because the libucl parser supports user supplied callbacks to define new macros and then we can have a macro to set variables and stuff like this um, and that's what I've been messing with and you're doing that within libucl as an extension uh, of it because the, the application can throw in uh, extra code. Um, so that the, um, and now it compiles again, good. <laughs> Let's have a look. Are you gonna share? Yes. No, Go for it. Um, so, um, ah. the idea here is let's make it a little bit less wide. I think that's better. Okay, now, um, here, for example, I can now do this. Yep, parser. The syntax I think is a bit confused. And so that both gets registered as a variable, and I just use a sub parser for that so that I can put in a tree here. And the set macro by default is the easy to use one, everything is converted into a string. And if you use non-scalar values, you just get a placeholder array or object. Um, but there's also a export, um, which then basically exports it and just a define, which defines that, but uh, emits it as a configuration. So that if I now try to do this, um, You can, oops, why is that not in here now? Should be, yeah, it is. Okay, I'm just, so as you can see here now, put that in, and I'll get a UCL configuration containing that, that content. Mm -hmm. But that means that I can also use it like this. Or well, I should be. Oh.
Why doesn't that work right now? I confused it too much. For some reason. Huh? Should work. It does up there. Why doesn't wait? Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, I've been messing around with the semantics. I may have the bug in here. No but the important part no. is that uh, and the more complex macro, which is going to use these features, is the include dir, which accepts a directory to mess around with. And it will recursively look for basically uh, anything named dot d in that. And uh, if it's a directory, it goes into it. If not, it complains. Uh, if it finds any file um, ending in, by default, the suffix .conf or .ucl, it creates a new object containing the content uh, of the file under the script uh, base name. So it removes the file extension and then creates an object of that name in the current object and imports into that. And if you uh, instead um, have it um, find a file named .inc by default, at least, it will uh, import it into the current object. In the, and for each directory, it also creates a new sub-object so that you have a configuration uh, which mirrors the file system layout. And you can, by putting just some links to snippets in the right files, you can decide either to treat them as uh, something to include in the current um, place in the tree or to create a sub-object and then place it in there. And that should make it possible to basically build up a configuration from snippets uh, in an even more flexible way than you can with FreeBSD 14's jl.conf, uh, uh, where you now have globs, but these globs can't be uh, recursive by default because they're, they're default glob function as used by the jail command from Lipsy doesn't support recursive globbing so that you can match an arbitrary number of slashes uh, in some part of the path to scan through subdirectories. And it doesn't create this configuration uh, nesting structure along the way. So you kind of have to materialize the configuration twice, once in the file system and then in the file content, which means you have to template out every single file every time you want to change its place in the configuration instead of templating it out once and then um, just including it. And so you have to, if you use something like Ansible, you have to run the Ginger 2 or whatever template for each invocation in, uh, of the template, instead of just templating it out once and then just updating some links to the templated files, which is more error prone and harder to automize and yeah, a lot slower. Did the so jail dot include inspire this in some way? Yes and no. Uh, the idea was there before, but the result wouldn't have been as flexible, in my opinion, as oh. what we have now. there now. And the idea is that you always have your configuration tree available and you don't have to uh, at least ever tell the command to now use this configuration file. Because then you always have all the configuration for dependency resolution and so on available. Hmm. Cool. Any questions for Jan? Does that make sense to anyone? Would anyone else would like to basically use this kind of mechanism? So it could then look something like uh, this. Uh, that, uh, main configuration would do something like this. Now I've changed the semantics for the optional parameters such that you can basically sp specify a capture condition where the variable 
of something is captured as a configuration variable between this and this tree depth and if it matches this or if it's this kind of uh, file to be included a directory or a configuration file or an include file which does not get its own sub object so that you can mix and match or just do an fn match against the uh, path before you capture it so that you have very flexible control over when you uh, overwrite a variable. Oh, and you can limit the depth, both the minimum and maximum of the include so that you can have intermediate dictionary which are only searched for dictionaries um, so that the right parent objects but empty objects are there for the files starting at the necessary minimum depth to be included into. And then um, the next is the option to um, uh, the maximum depth, just so you don't search too deep. Uh, and there's a recursion limit to uh, catch uh, infinite uh, symbling cycles. How far along do you consider yourself? Oof. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, however yeah. much uh, free time I have, what? I hear you. Well, oh, cool. Well, do yeah. chime in with any questions or observations for Jan, but otherwise, just sounds great. Keep at it. Looks cool. Well, I don't have Doug for just a quick update on his uh, 9P rebasing, not such as life. Um, anything else, gentlemen? Well, perhaps we call it there, put that in the right place. Going once, going twice. Well, like and subscribe, and thank you, everyone. I'll hang around a few minutes, and I wish you a great week.